Hey everybody, uh, welcome back to the channel. Um, I've noticed when I'm driving down the roads, I'm getting uh, lights on my dash like that. And the traction control is off. So I'm going to show you how to fix that. At some point we gotta talk, I'd rather save it for later. I feel like I need another, I'm afraid. Now, very often, um, you will need a special ABS uh, code reader to be able to diagnose what's wrong with your car. Um, you get lots of codes like this, but again, they won't show up on a regular scan scan reader. All right, I'm now out of the car. Um, so now after you've diagnosed where on your vehicle the uh, codes are leading to, you're going to need to get to the hub here. Because here's the sensor, but the wire runs all the way back into the hub for mine, whatever reason. Um, a lot of the times it's just gonna be the sensor plugged into the side of your hub around this area, whether it's, it might be a little further back, but it's, it's most likely gonna be on your hub area. Now, this may also not be the speed sensor itself. You'll need to check the wiring harness going from the speed sensor all the way back and under your car, right back to the main wiring harness because these wires are extremely susceptible to damage and can easily split and break or short. So you'll want to take off the sleeve and check all the way back. All right, you'll need to remove your brakes. I've just set them aside here. You don't wanna uh, wreck the brake line. So I've just set them on a melt crate. Um, but now I've got to remove the hub. This is usually on most cars can be one big bolt that you'll have to buy or a uh, socket for and then three other little bolts behind so i'll show you how to do that okay so i've gotten the uh main hub bolt uh loosened right now and broken so when you're taking this off you may need some heavy duty tools like an impact driver or a breaker bar um, these sockets are you're gonna have to buy a special kind to fit the hub bolt in your car, but if you check on the forms, you should be able to uh, find out which one you need. I own a 2002 Buick Regal, and I need a one third by eight uh, socket. Alrighty, so I've got the three bolts off of the hub, uh, here, here, and here, along with that center nut. So now you just gotta kinda smack the uh, kinda axle here that holds on that one nut uh, pretty good, and the hub should come off. Uh, you may also, if you've got a sensor like this, need to disconnect that so you don't just rip it out. Uh, but then yeah, it should uh, give you access completely to the hub and or the sensor. So as well, please do not forget to check your wire before you do this. You'd be surprised how uh, small of a little hair sticking out from a wire or a little cut in the wire will do to your car. So please make sure to check that before you go and attempt to rip off your whole hub. There you go, so I've got the whole hub off now. I head back to our workbench. Yeah, I'm not really sure who decided to put the sensor into the hub, but that was a horrible idea. All right, so I've got the hub off now. Um, if you're replacing the sensor in the hub, you can't necessarily do that without just replacing the hub. Um, which kind of stinks because that's what I'd, I'd do. But the other issue that a lot of people run into is this wire right here. So I've cut the sheathing off and I've noticed there's a little break in the wire right there. You guys probably aren't able to see that. Um, 
maybe a little bit. Anyway, so it's an open wire right there, which is probably the reason that I'm getting all those codes because it's probably just shorting the wire right there. So I'm going to clean up my whole hub with some lacquer, um, wash it off, and then I'm going to probably re-solder that connection and that should fix my issue. There you go, and that's the uh, hub all soldered, uh, soldered back up on that wire that was opened. And I've kind of cleaned it up and added new loom, taped it up, and we should be good to throw this back on. And this should fix our issue. And there's one more thing I'm gonna be doing, uh, and that is I'm going to be cleaning out this connector. Um, you can do that with different electrical cleaners, but amazingly enough, you can also do that with WD-40. Um, it's incredible what WD-40 can do. But yeah, you just uh, shoot a little bit of that inside, and I dump it out a little bit. Use your Q-tip, whatnot, to clean in there. And there you go. I'm gonna do both halves of the connectors. And this should be uh, completely clean, but yeah, that's pretty incredible. WD-40 did it again. It's so I've cleaned out my other connector and I'm just gonna throw this all back together now. All right, so unfortunately, what we did to the old hub and the old sensor did not fix our problem, but we have got a new hub with the sensor inside. Unfortunately, we couldn't buy the sensor, like many of you watching this video probably won't be able to either, um, but we'll show you roughly how to install this and the torque specs we got for our vehicle. Okay, so we've got the new hub. Uh, it's a pretty simple process. You're gonna need to move uh, the bracket from the old part of the hub. I didn't show you guys how to uninstall the <clears throat> right down to the hub. It's a pretty simple process. I know I showed you earlier in the video. Um, but I am going to show you guys how to reinstall uh, right from the axle up. I've got the uh, mounting plate for the uh, sensor uh, sandwiched in between the hub. And I'm going to put that back on now. When you're installing the sensor, you kind of need to push the axle and then push the sensor through to create enough of a gap and then you kind of have to slide your hub right on into that. Uh, then you kind of need to just take a rubber mallet and smack that on. Uh, make sure that the mounting plate is lined up so that the sensor can kind of fit into that. So I've got the hub uh, put on. I actually put the sensor plate backwards. You need this long arm going back towards the inside of your car. So next, you're gonna have to install the three bolts um, on your hub from the back side. Um, I'm just using a socket with kind of a two inch, two and a half inch extension that just gives me enough room to clear and get all three bolts. All right, so as you saw, I got all three of the bolts kind of on just with my ratchet. All right, so we've got the uh, last three bolts uh, tightened on and we just torqued them, or we didn't torque them. We uh, put them on really nice and tight and the castle nut we torqued down to 118 foot pounds because that's what they mentioned in the manual. So we just followed that. We're gonna put the brake rotor back on and the caliper. Alright, 
there you go. So it's all back together now. Um, that should actually fix our problem now. If not, then we have some serious issues. And I really hope that that isn't happening. So best of luck in your guys' projects. And uh, that's how you do it.